Steve Brady, the Executive Director here at the Covation Center. And I am beyond excited to be able to welcome Congressman Fred Keller here to join us here at the Covation Center to talk about business. And while he's a politician, we're gonna talk about his background in business and we're gonna talk about what the government is doing to help business as we've gone through this past 18 months or so. Congressman, welcome to the Curvation Center. Thank you, it's, a, it's a really a pleasure to be here today. Always, always great to have you back in, in our space as well as visiting businesses in the area. I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about your background? I know that you're, you didn't grow up a congressman. Nobody grows up a congressman, <laughs> right? So what, what got you there in terms of your, your business experience and your background? Because that's where you come from. Well, well thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I will say the one thing that, that I never imagined was I'd ever be elected to office. Uh, when, when I was a kid, I, I graduated from high school and, and went right to work in, in uh, the manufacturing uh, business. Uh, Headquartered in Lancaster County, but there were they had they had a factory in, in Snyder County, and I, I went to work right away working in the factory. And what, what did that factory make? Uh, kitchen cabinets, actually. Okay. Company's headquartered East Earl Township, Lancaster County, Conestoga Wood Specialties, uh, family-owned company, and uh, it was really unique because I, I started out running a rip saw, and I always tell a joke that I still have all my fingers because <laughs> you know the, the one thing with with employees and employers is the relationship is is really very good and i think my colleagues need to need to know that that employers do care about their team members and safety and and, and that everybody does well so um, in fact i'm glad you brought that up because one of the things i see all the time in comments on facebook is you're always talking to the business owners what about the workers well you were a worker you you well, have 10 fingers still but you you you're there you know what it's like we, we talked to the entire organization okay we talked to everybody in the organization so I, a lot of times i've you know as businesses have us in we go through we 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 see what 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 the business is, is doing and and the services they're providing and uh, we talk to the, uh, the the employees as we're going through. Uh, we've been a lot more careful over the last year because we haven't been into as many places. And when we do, we certainly want to be making sure we're following the CDC guidance and, and being respectful of everybody. So you probably haven't seen as many pictures of me with with workers and so on because again, we, we take this seriously and we want to make sure that everybody is safe and we've been following that guidance. A friend of mine worked in the factory with me and. Uh, we would, you know, we would talk at lunchtime and so forth, and, and uh, we talked about, uh, he, he knew about remodeling and okay. construction because he had where his uncle had, had been in that business, so he'd been around it, and, and he had one property in, in the borough of Freeburg in Snyder County, and uh, one or two that, there, and he said, hey, he was looking for somebody that, to go into business with. And we didn't have the benefit, Steve, of a covation center. Or, <laughs> you know, whatever was available at that point in time, we certainly didn't know about it because we worked all day long, but we, we talked about this and we started a partnership. And what we did was we, we would buy a property and we'd fix it up and, 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 and ran it. It was all residential, um, residential housing units. Um, and we would buy it and then we would do that. And so this is kind of like what we see on what's it, the, the, whatever those home and garden channels or whatever. Oh, okay. You were property the early brothers. flippers. Property brothers. Yeah, property brothers. And the early like flippers. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So, so Flip we, this house. <laughs> yeah. So we did that and, and we worked, we worked all day long at, you know, at our jobs. And then we would, uh, you know, we'd work in the evenings and Saturdays and holidays that we had off. We would work on. On, on our rental properties. And then we started doing uh, modular, we set modular homes and, and do, we were general contractors That's at one good. point in time. And it was just, and, and it helps you understand the struggles of people that are starting a business or even running an established business. Because, you know, the first time I had to come up with a few thousand dollars to, to dump into the, you know, you know, my part of the startup money is, we're, okay, we're gonna buy a place. So I, we had to put a, take a second mortgage out on our house. Oh, wow. So it was, uh, it, it was a journey. It was certainly a, a great opportunity, and uh, I, I'm glad I was able to do that because now that's my hobby. People say, "What do you like doing when you're not, you, you know, when you're not, uh, you know, meeting with people and doing doing the work as as a representative?" And here's the amazing thing. Here's what I see with people all across PA12, uh, and, and this is really the rewarding part of the job. And I saw it when I was in private industry, but we were able to do things to deliver our product, a, a quality product more quickly, more cost effectively to our customers. And when I started with the company, you know, back in 1985, when I was working in the factory, our lead time was like, I don't know, 10 or 12 weeks from order entry till we shipped on, on, on regular lead time orders. Uh, when I started managing the factory in, in 2000, 
it was it was uh, ten days. Wow. Oh, and when I left, much. it was four days. Oh. So, but you know how that got done? It didn't get done because uh, we just did it. You know, from the office, it was a hands-on thing. We had meetings with uh, regularly with, and, and they still do it. And I always, I always believe this. But we had meetings with our with our team members and said, okay, this is what our customer needs. This is what we need. We're in a global market. We need to be competitive. So, you know, twelve weeks isn't okay. Ten days isn't okay. People can get that. They they do some doors in twelve hours for customers. That's that's a significant uh, time it is. For, time reduction. It is so, now the industrial resource centers in Pennsylvania are uh, there for small manufacturers, small and medium manufacturers. I know the Innovative Manufacturer Center here in Williamsport covers some, uh, uh, Union yeah. County and, and Snyder yeah. County. I bet they were probably pretty excited to hear some of the lean initiatives. It sounds like that was a leaning initiative that you had there. Absolutely, you that. absolutely. But you know, you see that in businesses all across uh, all across PA twelve, all across Pennsylvania. And, and that is, it's the ingenuity of the people. And, and when we look at it, and, and you know, we, you, you were kind enough to, to have some visits with uh, people that, that are members here at the Covation Center, and they have small businesses right here in the Williamsport area. You know, Barrel 135, uh, 2310 Apparel, and uh, we were at uh, Avu Goldsmiths. Right. Outstanding stories, great people, and they have an idea and a passion and they do it well. And, and the fact that you have the, the, the Covation Center here uh, where they can collaborate, as I mentioned before we were, got on camera here, uh, we didn't have that, my, my friend and I, when we started our business, you know, we, we just, hey, we want to do this. It would have been so helpful to be able to talk to other people that started a business and, and learn. And, and that's really what I, I see as a, a, a really extra benefit for this is you can sort of sort of talk to other people and say, well, this went well for me or didn't. Even if you're not in the same kind of business, there's some things that, you know, transcend that, you know, that uh, business that you're doing and, and, and product that you're, or service and product that you're delivering. I appreciate, I appreciate the kind words. And this would be a, a time for me to have a crass commercial announcement. I'll even look at the camera for this just to say, <laughs> you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, we actually do have a six part series on starting a small business that I wish we'd had available for you when you and, uh, is it Don? Tom. Tom, when you and Tom were starting a business, that would have been uh, a nice thing for you guys to have too. And it's available for free because we are a not-for-profit and we mm -hmm. wanna get the word out to as many businesses as we can, the things that they need to think about. So I appreciate your kind words about what we do here. But, but you know, the small businesses are, are what makes our communities. And the fact that you're helping people get their business started, and and if you're already in business, you, you know that doesn't. I, from the people I've talked to, it doesn't end when they start their business. I mean, they come back for you know some of your uh, different programs, and and that to me is so valuable as as you look forward. So you have the small businesses that make our community, and you're helping you're helping be the incubator for that right here uh, fr from uh, downtown Williamsport. Thank you. And we, and we have a passion and we have a heart for what we call micro businesses, you know, the five employees or less, that sort of thing. But I want to go back to 249 or 250 employees briefly. When you're the plant manager, or you're running the operation there. How, what's the weight of that being responsible for the livelihood of over 200 people? Well, uh, I, I will say this. The one thing that I think is so important and this, this is what I want to talk about. When I started with the company, what I needed to be doing was making sure that people had the tools to do their job, they had the, 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 the education to do their job, and the resources. And then we, you know, uh, when we needed to do something for our customers, we would sit down and we'd have that meeting. And uh, the ideas came from the people. people. So it is, it is huge responsibility, but also, uh, that that was our family, and if somebody in our family wasn't doing well, it it affected all of us. So so the decisions we made, while well, they weren't always easy, it was always in the best interest of what was good for our entire business. You know, and and when the hardest thing I had to do, you remember two thousand eight when we had the the economic downturn. Sadly, I do. And and I remember we had, we had nineteen people that we had to lay off. And, uh, and you knew them by name, and oh, you knew their family oh, and what they did. Oh, what, what we did, what we did was we, we actually, with the human resources manager, she and I, uh, got in a conference room, and we had a packet of information for everybody, you know, everything that they, they would need. And uh, I can remember the emotion. Some people weren't happy, 
and I didn't, it was understandable. Uh, some people were thankful that they had the opportunity. And, uh, you know, some people cried. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the toughest things I had to do because these are people that came to work every day. And they did everything that was expected to make our company successful when I had no work for them. So when you look at, when you look at what happened last year, okay, so bring it back to this, we have everybody that, 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 that now it's, it's not large business, small business, fill in the blank, but uh, the, ex the experience of me having mortgaged my home to put the money in to buy the property, you have people that, that are making the investment, whether, whether you're, whether you're uh, you know, a retail establishment, whether you're, you're providing a, a restaurant or, or, or making products, um, they have that, that investment out there. Now they said, hey, look, you can't work. So that's really what you look at when we said, okay, what should the government now do? And you know, we did the paycheck protection to make sure that the, the, the businesses had the money to, you know, to cover their expenses and, and keep their employees attached uh, you know, to, 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 their, to their business you know, so that when things opened up, they would have, they'd be able to, to do what they do. Uh, so you had the paycheck protection, you had the, uh, the uh, idle loans, the uh, economic injury uh, disaster loans, and you had the uh, Main Street Lending Program, and those things to help the businesses. And I succeed. appreciate that because one of the things that I heard is, why are they getting help? We need unemployment. And I go, well, the difference between general unemployment and what we've just gone through is we put businesses on unemployment. And when you shut down a business and tell them you have to lock your door and there's nothing you can do unless you're a restaurant, there's not a whole lot you can do to sell some of your things, especially if you're a yoga studio or some of the places that are more experience based. We basically unemployed whole businesses mm -hmm. that still had to pay rent, still had to pay utilities. And so, you know, thankfully, Congress came through with the PPP, you know, in the previous administration and now extended it in the current one. I, I'm glad you brought up PPP and, and I wanted to ask you a quick question. As of yesterday, uh, SBA came out and said they're about out of money for that. And uh, what, what is the federal government doing? What is Congress doing uh, as they look at these deadlines and these, these walls that are coming up? Well, the thing I will say is I, I know there was the SBA did, a, did an amendment um, to direct more of the money to the smaller businesses because they, they said now lending institutions, you know, they set a limit as far as their, their, their uh, assets they had as far as lending to that, which would okay. direct it to smaller businesses, which... Uh, I'm a big believer in it, so. Yeah, so I, well, again, smaller businesses, most, most of the businesses in our country are small businesses. Absolutely. You know? yeah. uh, so when you look at that, so uh, there's that. Uh, and most definitely we're looking, because I know when we got to these points in the past, we went in and we looked at it regardless. And, and that's one thing that, that I think Americans should be very proud of that when this needed to be done last year, uh, everybody came together and it was a bipartisan you know, between the, the Congress and the administration to get it done. And here's what we needed to do and we did it. Uh, you know, there were things that were extended uh, like the PPP and so on. And I, I can see that, you know, as, as we get back into session next week and we have these discussions, you know, we'll take a look at what the reopening looks like and then determine what we need to do. But when it comes to making sure we take care of uh, America's workers, and America's innovators, uh, you know, and, and the people that are, are, are starting these small businesses, I, I'm confident that if something is needed, you know, we'll be able to, to figure out a way to get that done. Uh, some concern I do have is there's, there's a certain amount of people that will try and take that portion and add things onto it. Um, and I'm hopeful on, that on all sides of the aisles. Yes, right? yes, yeah. that's why I did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, it just and, happens because of the process. But but what what I think we need to do is is make sure that our our assistance and what we do is is really tailored to meeting that need, rather than bro broader policy. Kind of maintain that laser focus on what, yeah. what yes. we need to be doing, uh, kind as of, you would in your business if you had something to do. Absolutely, yes. we, we're not going to spend frivolously if we don't have the money to spend. Right on things we want to take care of the things we need to take care of and then expand out as, as we can on things we want to do. Which gets me to another question. As, as we've seen a lot of initiatives coming out in budgets and, and proposals and so forth, what do you see as the important infrastructure investments we should be making as a, as a country? You know, that's actually really a great point because yesterday we were at uh, Wyalusing Valley School District and uh, the uh, leather stocking was, was building out natural gas pipeline for access 
to, to homes, uh, to the school district and, and, and another government agency, and also uh, to uh, homes businesses in the school district. And uh, so you look at that and you say, okay, that to me would be a definition of infrastructure. So I would look at en energy, you know, being able to distribute energy, whether it's natural gas, uh, you know, you can, you can even talk about electricity and so on, but mostly natural gas. Uh, then I would also say um, roads, bridges, uh, the stuff you see, and then some of the stuff you don't see. That's the, what I call the other infrastructure, uh, which, as I already mentioned, natural gas pipelines, but then also water and sewer lines for, for municipalities, and then also broadband internet access. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that so, one up. Because well, I sort of put that on the end because I figured we we're going to talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> I, I am excited to talk more about broadband. It's been a, an issue near and dear to me ever since I got on our Rural Electric Cooperative Board of Directors mm -hmm. that in our rural areas, we don't have broadband. And it's kind of this digital divide. It's not kind of. We call it the digital divide between those in the cities and even Williamsport that have high-speed internet and those that don't. What sort of initiatives are going on? I know we've had some FCC, uh, FCC auctions, auctions and some yes. others. Uh, what can we be looking for there? Well, I, I, I do know that in, in each of the COVID relief packages, there's been money for broadband internet access. Um, one thing that I've, I've made a point of doing when, when I'm in the discussions is talking about it much like we did the internet, internet or excuse me, the highway system, the interstate highway system. So you have the interstate highway system and you know we built that out because there was a commitment to get that done, you know, in the 50s. So now we're half a century later, a little more. And what do we need to look at? And what does that information highway system look like? And how do we how do we do it so that it's not part here and part there? And really take a comprehensive look at it. So I'm hopeful we can get a proposal together. There's been a commitment across the aisle on both sides. So this this is not unique to anything. Uh, an interesting story I would I would say about that. You know, you talk about, uh, you know, being in Williamsport and having access and then, you know, maybe being in Sullivan or Snyder or some other counties and not. Uh, we were having hearings now remotely, uh, but this was uh, this was last fall. We had a we had a, a bill. come. Or it was last fall. We had a bill coming out of committee. And what it was, was we do the amendment process or what we call markup. And uh, we were doing the social distancing, but uh, my Republican colleagues and I were in the room all spaced out. In, in the committee hearing room in, in the Rayburn office building right across the street from the Capitol in the United States, it's a federal building. And that, that meeting took a long time because we were losing connectivity. We had to have mobile hotspots brought into the committee room. Uh, wow. So, so there in, is in the, Washington, D.C. In Washington, D.C., because we didn't have enough bandwidth for everybody's all the work that was happening. In, in the nation's capital. Funny and it certainly you... isn't resources, and it certainly isn't that we didn't have good computers. And I, as I tell people, and we had staff to help us with this, how do these kids do it? When our elected officials suffer the same thing we do, uh, that's when things can happen. So I'm glad to hear yeah, that the those... Rayburn com Committee building, <laughs> <laughs> committee had, had internet challenges. Well, the, 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 only, the only thing I would say to that is it shouldn't come to us having to, having to do that. It, we, we should take the back seat to the people that get the job done every day. And that, that's how our team approaches things. I appreciate it, it, that. It's not, it's not about us. It's about the people that we work for. And, and to me, that's really, that's really the privilege of, of what we get to do every day because we get to, we get to come out and, and see hardworking people that have an idea that get together with members of the community and, and they open a business and people come and work at that business. And they, they deliver uh, goods and services that are, that are needed. That's, that's, the, that's the important thing about business. Everything they deliver, there's a need for, right? right. Not the same thing in government. There's plenty of things we deliver that there's probably no need for. <laughs> I, I know we all talked about essential workers as we went through the pandemic. And, you know, I, I, I made a thing one time, essential jobs equals all jobs. And I, I said to somebody, I said, probably the only place there's a few unessential jobs is under the dome in, in Washington, D.C. Maybe we could... We could take a look at that, but uh, uh, but that's what business does, and that's what people do that go to work every day. And and a lot of times people say to us, "Boy, you guys, you guys are you know, you work really hard. You're doing this and that. And you're all over the place." I said, "We don't work any harder than the person that is, is is getting up every day and running their business or going to work at a business and, and getting the job done because they work all day. They they raise their family. They 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 volunteer in the community." I said, what happens is when I show up, you recognize my face. 
That is the only difference. And our commitment to the people of PA-12 is that we're going to work every day as hard as the people work to make sure your government is responsive to what you want it to be. We're going to let you define what you want us to do. We're not going to try and define you or your business or, or how you can power your business or, or anything else. That's up to you to decide. And you, you let us know what your priorities are, and that's what we'll work on. Hey, Congressman, I want to thank you for coming in here and sharing that. We do appreciate taking the time and letting the businesses hear that you actually care about the businesses. I, I care businesses and, and, and their team members. You know, th th Any business can't get it done without the employees. In fact, I had a, a friend of mine say, if, if I didn't have people coming to work every day, the, 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 the machines out there would just be hunks of metal. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't be anything. So it's, it's all about the team.